Hey everyone, how's it going? So, Generation 1 was the generation that started everything in Pokemon, but nowadays, at least for me, it's the generation known as being full of glitches. Don't get me wrong, I still love the games, and I love exploiting these glitches. In my glitched Magikarp run, I used a lot of these glitches to make the run possible, but there's a lot of other glitches I didn't get to talk about. So, I figured, why not make a list of the top 10 glitches I find interesting? And funny enough, there are so many glitches, I feel like I'm going to be leaving off somebody's favorite. So if I left off a glitch you really like, let me know, and also let me know how many of these glitches you've actually heard of before this list. So yeah, that's all I got to say. Without further ado, let's get to the top 10 most interesting glitches in red and blue. Number 10, we have a glitch that I don't think is very useful, but I find pretty hilarious. So in Celadon City, there's that one building that looks like a Pokemon Center, but when you talk to the guy in the front, he's like, oh, this is a hotel for humans. Well, if you go to the top right uh, corner where the PC would be in a Pokemon Center, you can walk over it, but if you try and access it like a PC, it'll work. So obviously they just cut and pasted the code from the PC, deleted the hitbox of the PC, but didn't delete the fact you could access a PC from there. I can't imagine why you would need to use this PC ever, but it's just kind of a funny oversight, and that's why it's here at number 10. Moving on to number 9, did you know you could access the SSN after it's already departed? The way you do this is really easy actually. You just save on the very specific tile, just one above the uh, sailor, and you have to face right. Then when you soft reset, you can hit surf and you'll just surf over him. It looks really ridiculous, but you can access the SSN again as if it never left, and I don't really know why you'd need to do this, but you can. But the other thing you could do, and I would have loved to have known this when I was younger, is you can access that truck that was supposed to have Mew. Uh, fun fact, it, it doesn't, and there's nothing there. But you can actually explore around this area, and it's a pretty cool area. A lot of people tried to do this by getting Surf Before Cut, and this is possible. But hey, with glitches, you can do it even easier. At number 8, we have a glitch that I find pretty funny, and one I actually used to use all the time. Mostly because I forgot to get the bike a lot. So yeah, you can get the bike voucher and talk to that guy, or you can just rent one. You didn't know that? Well, it's not quite a rental. It's more an ignoring what the person tells you. If you keep hitting B and pressing left, Eventually, they just give up, and they give you a bike. That's neat. I mean, you won't have access to this bike after you leave Cycling Road, but you can access Cycling Road without a bike. Moving on to number 7, we have a glitch that I would have loved in Gold and Silver, but unfortunately, we only got it in Red and Blue. And this is because Red and Blue is really bad at storing information. You see, everything in the game has an index number, a way the game can look it up. Locations, Pokemon, items, they all have one. And sometimes the game is bad at keeping track of which index number they're looking up, or it shares some of the data. Case in point, Pokemon that evolve with evolutionary stones don't actually need those stones. You can actually just use a Pokemon whose index number corresponds to the item index number. In more simple words, you want to evolve your Nidorino? Simply have your Nidorino level up in a fight, and then end the battle with Executor in some way, and hey, your Nidorino is going to evolve! You can do this with every stone. For Thunderstone, it's Growlithe, Waterstone, it's Onyx, and Leafstone, it's Psyduck. Firestone, you need to use a very specific Missingno, and yes, different Missingno are like a little different, but this is a pretty just kind of weird glitch. Um, I don't know why you'd ever use it, maybe if you ran out of evolutionary stones, but in Gen 1, you can just buy them except for the Moonstone, so not sure how useful it is, but pretty funny nonetheless. Okay, at number 6, we have a glitch that probably we all would have liked to have known when we were kids trying to catch them all, and that's the fact that the Safari Zone can be completely bypassed. Well, for the most part. At least you don't have to catch Pokemon using those Safari Balls. How do you do this, you might ask? Well, you just bring them to Cinnabar, of course. You can bring them to Cinnabar? Well, yes, with glitches. Okay, so Cinnabar is really poorly programmed, and this glitch takes advantage of that. Basically, all you have to do is fly the Safari Zone, um, walk for like a second, leave, fly directly to Cinnabar, and on the rightmost edge of the island, just surf up and down, You'll see all the Pokemon that should be appearing at the Safari Zone appear here, but due to other glitches, you can just throw an infinite amount of Master Balls, or even if you're not using other glitches, just put it to sleep, or, you know, get to use an actual Pokemon. And because this glitch is so useful, and one I would have loved to have known years ago, I felt it warranted the number 6 spot on this list. Okay, so moving on to number 5, we have a glitch that is super easy to demonstrate, but very difficult to explain without getting too math-y if that's a word, which I know it's not. So, bear with me. Basically, here's the deal with Experience Underflow. Pokemon level up at different rates, meaning to get from level, let's say, 4 to level 5, different Pokemon need different amounts of experience points to get there. Now, each group, and there are four of them, have a formula they use. 
So Dratini, for example, is in the slow group, and Squirtle's in the medium slow group. And it's actually this medium slow group where there's a problem. You see, the formula wasn't really intended to be used at level 1, because you can't catch level 1 Pokemon. But if you somehow get a level 1 Pokemon, something kind of funny happens. The formula will end up telling the game that your Pokemon has gained negative 54 experience points. Now, the game doesn't like negative numbers, so it just kind of rounds up to, oh, about 16 million. I don't know if I'm using the right terminology, but that's basically what happens. So if you don't get that back into the positives, the game's going to check how many experience points you've gained. And it's going to be 16 million, which, by the way, is 16 times what you need to be at level 100. And thus, will warp you directly to level 100. Okay, so at number 4, we have maybe not just the most famous glitch in Pokemon, but probably the most famous glitch in video game history. And that's the Old Man Glitch, otherwise commonly known as the Missingno Glitch. We all knew about this glitch. We all knew about what happened when we used this glitch. And Nintendo Power told us if we caught Missingno, our game would crash, which was a lie. But let's explain everything surrounding this glitch. So part one is performing the glitch, which is really easy. In red and blue, because this was fixed in yellow, you talk to the old man in Viridian City and get him to show you how to catch a Pokemon. What's going on here is your name is being stored in the wild Pokemon data. If you encounter another wild Pokemon, there's no problem. But we're going to be using Cinnabar Island again, and it's very similar to how we get Safari Zone Pokemon here. But instead of the game taking data from the Safari Zone, it's taking data from our name. And let's just say our names are going to give the game some pretty wacky Pokemon data. The game looks at the 3rd, 5th, and 7th character in your name to determine what Pokemon will appear, and the 2nd, 4th, and 6th character to determine what level the Pokemon will appear at. So let's use an example. So I looked up Jero's in capital letters. I would be getting a Clefable at 145, a Snorlax at 146, and of course, Em and Missingno. The reason why they're so popular is that M corresponds to a null character, so Jero's only five letters, which is why M would appear. And Missingno also corresponds to an end of name marker, which all our names have. Now, I recognize this is a separate glitch, but I'm still counting this as part of number four, and that's the item duplication glitch, because we always use these glitches together. And I want to talk about the other three glitches separately. Basically, when you encounter Missingno, something really weird happens, but it's actually kind of simple to explain. The game's trying to do what it normally does when you've seen or caught a Pokemon, and that's modify your Pokedex, but it doesn't have a Pokedex entry for Enter Missingno, so um, it uses your 6th item slot, and it adds 128 if that would make it less than 255, and that indicates seen. If you actually, like, would drop 2 items, let's say you had 1, drop 2 to make it 127, you can actually catch it and it'll duplicate again by 128. So the game's doing exactly what it should be doing, you just shouldn't be encountering this Pokemon. Then again, they probably should have not had it so easy to encounter, and for yellow, this was eliminated. At number three, we have the glitch that made the glitch Magikarp run, well, possible, and that's Brock Through Walls. Now, I've tried looking up exactly why this glitch happens, and unfortunately, I can't find the information, so if someone could fill me in, that'd be really helpful. But at this point, I'm just going to explain sort of what the glitch is, and kind of why it works, but I don't really know myself. Basically, what the glitch is, is by talking to the trainer that's supposed to take us to Brock's gym from the right, which you're not supposed to do, the game can freak out and usually will just soft lock, meaning the music will play, but you'll be locked in place and the game is pretty much like you can't do anything, you have to reset. But if you have a Bulbasaur at level 8 with three moves in the order Leech Seed, Tackle, and Growl, and Leech Seed's PP doesn't matter, but Tackles is at 16 and Growl's at 36, you can bypass... Not just Pewter City, but you can just walk through walls a a until you enter a building. But yeah, this glitch is pretty nuts. Uh, come on, you're walking through walls without a game shark? That looks pretty darn cool, and that's exactly why it's in the top three. Now, at number two, we have one of the craziest glitches in red and blue, but also one of the best for speedrunning, and that's item underflow. So we talked about experience underflow, and item underflow works kind of the same way. Basically, the way you set up item underflow is by using the item duplication glitch, and you want to get exactly 255 of an item. 255 is a very interesting property in that it's the property of the cancel button. So, basically what you're going to want to do is toss items above the new cancel button, which is really just another item, and the game's going to think you have less items, and you can end up swapping items by doing a really kind of weird thing where you toss all but two and swap items together to get the game to think you have negative one items. 
And like with experience underflow, the game doesn't like negative numbers. So just like it gave you all the experience points, it gives you all of the items, many of which correspond to vital game data. Using this glitch, you can do a ton of cool things, like manipulating what Pokemon appear, going through walls, um, warping from map to map. It's just the possibilities are endless, and I don't even fully understand everything you can do with this glitch. The way the glitchy item menu works is that the item names and numbers correspond to different bytes of the game's data. And by knowing what you're doing, you can just make the game do tons of cool things. Like in speedruns, they make Nurse Joy revive fossils. Kinda cool. But it's not the most interesting glitch, at least in my opinion. And finally, at number one, I felt like I had to put the glitch that let me finally, after all these years, catch them all. And that's Trainer Fly otherwise known as the Mew Glitch. Nobody thought you could really get Mew, everyone thought these were just myths, but no, using Trainer Fly, you can not only just get Mew, but any Pokemon in the entire game, and a bunch of Glitch Pokemon. Basically, here's how it works. You first need to find a trainer with maximum sight, and you need to have a way to escape from them, which is why it's called Trainer Fly, but teleport works just fine. You teleport away or fly away, and the game kind of goes crazy, which is a recurring theme in this video. The game thinks you're in a trainer battle, but it doesn't know what the Pokemon is, it, it's, it's looking for data. So what you're going to do is give the game the data, and that data is going to be read from the special stat of whatever trainer Pokemon you fight. You actually can fight a wild Pokemon afterwards, and that wild Pokemon can be a Ditto, so you can manipulate exactly what the special stat is of your opponent. Then finally, head back to the route where you originally flew away, and there'll be a Pokemon waiting for you. Like I alluded to earlier, the Pokemon that appears will be the Pokemon whose index number corresponds to the special stat of the Pokemon you last fought. Now, index and Pokedex numbers are not the same, so you might want to look up a useful chart to find out exactly how to get the Pokemon you want. But you can do even crazier stuff. By using Growl and modifying their attack downward, you actually modify their level. So the default level is 7, and by using Growl 6 times, you can get that precious level 1 Pokemon. And hey, if you want to get a perfect Pokemon in Sun and Moon with Bottle Caps, really easy way to do it. Only warning, make sure you have a spare spot in your party. The game won't let you withdraw the Pokemon. It actually will crash. But that's all for today's list. This has gone on way longer than I thought it would. Unfortunately, there were plenty of other glitches I didn't get to talk about. So let me know if you knew about these glitches before and if I got anything wrong. I'm not an expert in these glitches, but I did try and look them up as best I can. But I'd love to learn more, and yeah, thanks for watching, take care.